after talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Doesn't he just say beep boop? Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. It was also the convertible that... It was also the convertible that he himself rode in on the front of the homecoming parade. What? That sentence doesn't make sense. He was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. I don't understand that sentence. I'm thinking maybe something at lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy of Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't you be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a se second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes are lighting up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a power powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And then if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. That's... Mm. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked them, a very strange feeling came over me. And flavor was unlike anything I've ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Yeah. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know? Like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. Besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt I'd be much of use to anyone. Please, 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 please! It would mean the world to me. No one has to know if I came to you from Colonel Sanders. Nope. Oh, I don't want- I just won't- don't want to tell her. Ugh. Why isn't it an option just say, no, I'm not comfortable telling you? Man. Because I don't want to betray Colonel Sanders. That's not cool. He trusted me with something. But I also don't want to tell her a fake ingredient, because if I do, it could upset her. Uh, I guess I'd be more okay with upsetting her about a fake ingredient than upsetting or betraying someone's trust, but unless that fake ingredient poisons someone Because uh, that's a thing in this game apparently What do you think should you protect Colonel Sanders secret or share it with your bestie make up a fake ingredient You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about Shit see that's what I was worried about It was I of Newt. I know it sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can he do? I am Newt! Wow! Her eyes light up imagining such a thing and you figure that you've satisfied, satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around to some dumb thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting sequence to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry Blossom's petal fills the air. He always is led by cherry blossoms. I'm kind of upset that that's not a unicorn. 
It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. <laughs> Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. Admire his majestic glory. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. <laughs> Without ever acknowledging that he's being washed, he does a short horse. He does a short horse? What does that mean? Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse- Oh, horse dance. Okay. He does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a horseable butte you have. I mean, what a horseable butte you have. Dang it. That's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, Big Papa just gets really nervous about around people like they like. Nice. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and we're up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. <laughs> He's sweating. <laughs> His eyes. She gives you or she gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You must know, or you know it must be really bad. Oh, by the way, they're hiding. You must know it's really bad. There you go. Like counterfeiting recipes, bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients, bad. Summoning a demon, bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. <sighs> Uh, why don't you make it like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? That's a good one. Tell them to stop acting and you're acting like you're not interested in them, but tr really try and get a closer look. Yep, I'm not interested, but I'm gonna try to get a closer look. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try to cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <gasps> <coughs> it's time for class. You're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. <gasps> no, he went, he went Super Saiyan again. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules. I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ain't you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look of what was what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. I am new to it. Damn it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. The book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that there haven't been any studying. They haven't been just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're toasting or tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. I'm playing. <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <gasps> hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! Stop licking the couch. Turd. You watch how you talk to him. Er, you watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Womp. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Oh, snap. 
Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Ha! <laughs> There's weird flashing in the game. Interesting. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazy men are about to come to blows. I think I'm, they must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. <laughs> Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he knows now. Or he, he must know that's a ruse, right? Oh, okay. Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena at least. Or don't. Honestly, who do I care? What do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, sprinkler, <laughs> sprinklers, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Is he late? Uh, students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I was right. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his, furry Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Oh yeah, keep yawning. Without, uh, uh, without further ado, we'll re review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to listen. Truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. And you miss most of the important parts. When you come to Sprinkles, or wait, when you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Big Papa? Naturally, this appears to, to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? A dog visit. A shimmering pepper! A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. It's that guy. <laughs> My friend. <laughs> this guy again? I have, I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must, all you must do is. <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is. <coughs> Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through it. <coughs> to fulfill <coughs> the prophecy, <coughs> you must. Uh, you feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh, man. Wow, I gave myself a head rush from all those coughing fits. You come to and Cookie find everyone time. is staring at you. Guppy! What's up, my dude? Want some cookies? Say thank you for those treaties. Friend. Get some treaties. Jada! Want some cookies? Come get them. Jada! Come here. I'm not coming over there and giving to you, you turd. Ow! Bong, 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 bong. Oh yeah, I think I'm uh, stuck to cut calling you Guppy. It's been stuck in my head. Stop! How you doing, my man? Welcome to the stream. Were you playing uh, some games? The pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. Whoops. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. 
I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competition cook-off. The man they stop everyone wasting their time, step and tell them you're on. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Stop wasting everyone's time. Is everything in competition with you two? Yes. Yes. Hey, stop licking the couch. I mean, stop. Oh, you had to bail. Oh. Oh, then you had basketball. I thought you said you had a bail. Oh, bummer. That's a bummer when you're in the groove and you got to bail out. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn, to love, to learn, to love. Sure. Why not? But definitely not to cons constantly battle. Yeah. Stop getting your jeans crossed or your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters or capture or something? <laughs> I need to eat if I'm going to have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. Uh how are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fanning off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already bought my own lunch. Big Papa, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. What about your lunch? He reaches out and presents a gift to you. My special, uh, my special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down. And a tart for a dessert. Oh, that's right. She makes tiny food. And just... I'll... That makes me think of old school Mickey Mars cartoons. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the one with um, the big giant and he just goes to that field and he like pulls up a bunch of uh, pumpkins and he just um, eats them like grapes. Um, and and then he get, finds that well and he uses it and drinks all the water in the well. That That's what that reminds me of. Just, um, just eat them all. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, but it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle! Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports in court. A sports in court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. He's going to take us somewhere else. At least not until we turn on the timer! And then a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer Ready. That's what I'm talking about! I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My best you can beat the best of them. Can best the best of them. Jeez. Best believe it. Like a diamond. Oh, wrong voice. Uh... Why can't I think of her accent? I have her friend's accent in my brain. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure and now my chance to shine. There it is. I will defeat you myself. You had this chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you could really impress them again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'd be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does the water boil at? It's always boils when 100 F. That's wrong! No. What were you thinking? What were you thinking, Big Papa? Get your head in the game! You're going to need some to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices do you say you use? 11! That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. <laughs> a tail, tail wagging intensifies. Now that you got some basic steps going on, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavors? Trust, vigilance, gratitude. Trust! That's wrong! I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? My dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. <laughs> Next question. I didn't know what the answer to that one was. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. 
When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you've been.